Hey, it's Scott Todd. Welcome to the Land Geek Roundtable. Guess what? Mark's not here. Scott Bossman's not here. Mimi's not here. Three of the core people are not here, but guess who's here? Myself, Mike Zano, Eric Peterson, and Tate Litchfield. What we have here is we kind of have a, an equal number of Surface users versus Mac users on this roundtable, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about is one of the most favorite topics that most people like love, which is our most recent deals. So we're going to get right into it. Let's talk about our most recent deals. First up, Eric, what are your most recent deals? All right. So I want to talk about two because they're both pretty recent and um, somewhat different. So the first one was a property I bought for about three grand. Um, I had offered it for sale on a deal of the week. And I had a customer that purchased a property from me previously and asked for a refund. And it was a big refund because he made a huge down payment. Um, we're talking over $5,000 refund um, prior to the guarantee running out. Um, but he came back to this deal of the week and uh, he wanted to buy it. So um, he wanted to pay cash. And uh, I sold that property for $7,725. That's about a, almost 160% return. Um, just a straight cash deal. I mean, I know Mark doesn't like it, but uh, you know, I can't complain. I can take that $7,000 and reinvest it in more land because I know I've got plenty of land to buy right now. Um, the second one I want to share, um, just because it's a little different, um, is also kind of useful to talk about. It's a property I bought wholesale from another um, land geek. And I paid about uh, $1,500 for it. And I sold it on terms for about 150% return. Total terms price was uh, almost 3,700. Um, the reason that one has a somewhat low return is um, it's, I'm working with a particular customer that um, I, I've talked about him before. He has uh, basically told me that he intends to buy a lot more land from me. So I gave him a deal hoping that that does follow through. We talked about a lot of different scenarios, but uh, anyways, he's got one purchase right now. Um, needless to say, even if he doesn't buy any more, I'm still happy with the deal. It's a decent return. Um, and it was a property I was ready to move out of my inventory. Um, and again, that one actually came from another deal of the week. So two for two on the deal of the week. I mean, Okay, Eric, so let's, let's think about this one for a minute. Let, let's, there's been a lot of discussion about this whole cash deal thing. Like, are you not ashamed of taking cash? Because Mark would say never take a cash deal. And like, people are afraid of taking cash now because Mark says not to take a cash deal. Like, what, what gives, man? How can you go against uh, the godfather of land here? Absolutely. So, and actually that's, that's just one of my recent cash sales. I had a slew of cash sales in the month of, well, probably mostly in September. Um, and honestly, um, I love to have some cash deals now and again, because it allows me to recoup capital and it allows me to reinvest that in my business. So, um, Yes, there's the argument of selling notes and, you know, other strategies. But in this case, um, I have a large queue of properties to buy. And until I have the capital, um, I really can't buy some of them. So this, this big load of cash sales that I did in September has allowed me to turn around and go out and buy a bunch of new inventory that... Uh, Yes, I could have sold the note and bought fewer of those properties, but by selling for straight cash, I was able to buy more of those properties. So, right. um, and I'll turn those into terms deals, I'm sure. Um, maybe one or two of them might go for cash, but um, 
cash is not all bad, but it is bad if you don't have something to do with it. So if you don't have another property to buy behind it, then you have a problem. Yeah, because you know, like cash in the bank is zero, right? But like, I agree with you. Like I, I don't mind cash coming in the door because I can redeploy that cash and put it to use. And to me, it's the multiplier effect. You know, Mark used to say this all the time, money loves speed. And you know, if it's just sitting in your bank account, well, it's not gonna love you anymore. It needs to move. And um, so no better way of getting that than cash, right? Right. So those are cool, two cool deals. Now, the, the guy that, that, the second deal that you talked about for the deal of the week guy, right? Like this is a guy you've talked about before. Um, you, you know, like, is, is this, is this, you, you know, like, is this guy going to like, like this, the, the fact of the refund, the whole refund thing, does that scare you a little bit? Like, th does the thought of, of, like you just said, you, you put a lot of money out on the refund. Like, should you stop doing a money back guarantee because of the thought of like having to pay out this guy a lot of money or what? So let me make sure that, that we got that straight. So that the cash buyer on the $3,000 property that sold for 7,700 is the one that asked for the refund. That was on a previous terms deal. So okay. yeah, I mean, he just paid me almost $8,000 and theoretically he could come back and you know ask for a refund within my guarantee period. But honestly, I'm not that concerned about it. I mean, if it happens, it happens, but um, more often than not, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, I, I look at that as a part of doing business. All right. All right. Let's go over to Mike Zeno. Mike, what? Oh, by the way, Mike, fellow surface user, by the way. So how's it going, Mike? I didn't think you were going to say who was the surface users. Uh, and who was the I Mac users? Now you've mute, made it I really clear. You. I got to mute you, Eric. Go, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Mute the Mac, please. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now I get the have you, back. you guys have seen the commercial with MacBook, right? Like, you guys seen, have seen that commercial? The guy's name is no. Mac. MacBook. Oh, uh, it's great. I'll have to show you the video. Sounds made up. Sounds <laughs> like fake news to me. We're going to have to mute you too, Tate. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> No, no, no worries. Um, so we, um, similar, I had a property we had sold. Um, we acquired the property. I think we were all in for somewhere. Um, I think I was all in for actually um, 7,000 on this property, but then uh, they paid a couple thousand dollars and uh, um, they defaulted. So we got the property back. And then uh, through Craigslist, we got another buyer and the buyer is putting uh, 1500 down. So now that's reducing my all in. And um, the, let's see, we did charge, I know that people go back and forth on this one. It's probably another whole round table topic about interest, but there's interest on this one. So it's a, it's a, uh, let's see, 96 months the loan is for, they're paying uh, three, $349.44 a month. For 96 months, it's going to come out to be like uh, over 30000 So it's pretty good. Good enough, right? I'll take it. <laughs> That's, That's really a whole good. other round table topic, the interest. I don't even want to dive into that. I know everybody's got uh, different feelings on that, but that'd be another one. I so, like that. No. Okay. I, so, so, Mike. Yes. The, does does the because Eric just talked about uh, the the refund too, right? Like doing yes. a cash refund. Does that freak you out? No, because like, I knew this is an area. Uh, this is a an area that people just. I know people wanted this one, so I was not worried. I know there's high demand in this area. Um, I, I knew we had people waiting, uh, and so um, and actually, I want to say that it was Craigslist, but I don't really know. I'm my sales guy. Which one? I, Sorry, everybody. I don't know if it was Craigslist or if it was off uh, off of somebody that was already interested. But I believe it was Craigslist. I don't want to. I want to be transparent. I don't really know. But anyway, I'm still happy with it. <laughs> okay, Mike. Listen, if this were the Shark Tank, you would be yes. eaten alive right now for not knowing your numbers. I mean, you knew the numbers. You just didn't know the source of the numbers. You know, I I I, I know where my Scott. skill lies. My skill lies in communication. I take, I'm a communicator. I, 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 have I would, I'm going to come to Mike's back here. I mean, 
Scott, yes, he would get crucified for not knowing all of his numbers, but it isn't the end of the week, right? Like he's probably going to get those numbers later on this week when he looks at all of the deals that his team's done. Right, Mike? Yes, of course. See? Tate yeah, 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 yeah. Tate completes me. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, why would he do this every day, Scott? You don't do this listen, every day, do you? Listen, I love the fact that another Mac user is coming to the aid of a Surface user. It's all good, man. See, the world can operate – the world can you, Mike. amongst us, okay? Like Although I, I am getting better at this whole, I'll tell you, this is why though, honestly, we talk about, um, we talk about the community, right? And, and why it's so awesome. This is why I hang around people like Scott Todd, because he is such an accountant type personality and I, and I'm getting better at these, I think. So yes, I joke that I don't have all that, but I have, uh, you know, it's, it's a growing process to be around everybody. Has, my, my expertise is, uh, is people skills. Like I make, I love, I, I'll be honest. I still get involved on the, on the intake side because I just love making those deals. I mean, I have people that can take care of things once the ball is rolling, but I love it. So I'll talk about another acquisition. Is that okay? Even though we're talking about, cause this is going to be a great, I have 47 properties in Florida, hundred dollars a piece. And I'm whoa, not wholesaling whoa. these ones. Hold I'm hold not on. wholesaling these whoa, ones. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said you have 47 properties in Florida $100 for $100 a piece. a piece. They're probably worth about, you know, I would say they're a little over 2K on terms each, but it's it's not huge, but but I'm not wholesaling My, these ones. You know, I have yeah. a wholesale bug in me, and I, I'm not wholesaling these ones. Do you need what? a partner? Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike, stop. I'll give you, I'll give you, Two hundred dollars a piece for them right now. Tate, do I hear three? I, I'll give you three. I don't even know what these are. Hey, I, hey, I stop. Stop. I'm gonna Scott, mute you. Scott, hey, hey, Scott, let's go 50 50 on this. All right. Yeah. See now this 250, is like 250. See, they okay. know I'm a wholesale animal and I and, and and I do get attracted by by cash. But Mike, these, let me do some really, math really for nice. you. These are really, really nice. They might even be worth more than 2K on terms each. Mike, let me do some math for you. You bought them for 100 each. Yeah. You got 47 of them. Yeah. You sell them to Scott and I at uh, 250 a piece, right? So that's $150 profit for you. You let Scott and I make you a very, let, Lara, let us make Lara very happy with a nice $7,000 payday. Come on, man. <laughs> These. I don't, I we'll haven't got the full, these could actually be worth a couple of grand. I gotta, I, I'm gonna have to hold on these. That's a hard stop. And Mike, really, realistically, you don't want to do that research. You want to send them to Scott and I. Just flip them out. We got them. We got them, Mike. You, you good? <laughs> well, here's, Mike, we here's, why I, here's why I don't, because I, I for example, I, I have a no, 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 Mike, you're being, you need to worry about making the deal happen. You're, you're, you're not being a deal maker. You're be being a deal breaker right now. <laughs> yes, Mike, make the deal. This is why I don't want to do the deal. I'll tell you why. Because I, I haven't done the full re I had a property. I still do. It's process getting sold right now. It was a, oh, it was an area in Colorado that may not be strange to take. And, <laughs> and, and, and this person, uh, you know, this, the land, it's kind of a marshy area. And so I got it cheap, cheap, probably like, I don't know, a few hundred dollars. And I was going to wholesale it for like a thousand just because I was going to call someone to work in the area. But lo and behold, it's got a lot higher value. So I get a little nervous now that I, I, I got I to research Florida first. Sounds like a lot of work to me, Mike. A lot <laughs> of work. Yeah, doesn't sound right to me, Mike. <laughs> just, let, just flip it and, and we'll do, you don't have to worry about it. It's like a no brainer, man. The no brainer is, yes, yes. Okay, good. We have a deal. You said yes. Okay, with that, <laughs> Tate, Tate, what deals do you have? All right. So this is a deal I talked about last night on Office Hours, and it's kind of interesting because uh, the whole backstory behind it. Uh, I was I was out there uh, on a walk uh, last night before Office Hours, and I looked down at my phone, and a number came across, and I didn't recognize it. I answered it, and the guy answered and said, hey, you sold my brother or my cousin a piece of property in this area. And I'm thinking, oh, man, what, where's this going? Hopefully it's not a this isn't a crazy person. And he says, and I want to buy one in that area as well. Can you sell me something? I said, yeah, sure. No problem. 
remind me again who's your cousin because I didn't have any of my data in front of me didn't have LG pass open and so we go over it he says it's his name is this he said how much is your cousin paying he goes 350 a month it's like okay very good I'm getting excited he goes here's my credit card information so I'm on the walk I said to my wife I said give me your phone I write down his information and he gives it to me and I says, okay, great. He, I was like, we're going to charge you uh, 350 today. And he's like, the only problem is I can't pay the doc fee until Friday. No problem. Go ahead and process the 350 today. I go back to, to my office. I sit down to pull up his uh, cousin's information. And sure enough, his cousin is not paying 350, but only 250. So I kind of left in this, this situation where I go, oh man, do I call the guy back, make his day, say, hey, I know I quoted you at 350, it's actually 250, or do I just let it ride? And so I was talking with the round table, um, or excuse me, the office hours attendees last night, and they shamed me, Scott, and they told me that I needed to give the guy a call back because Thanksgiving is just around the corner, and he's going to be at the dinner table with his cousin, and his cousin's going to say, I got that property for Mr. Litchfield, only 350 a month. And his cousin's going to say, wait, you're paying 350 I'm only paying 250 And then it's going to result in a family fight, and there's a chance that I'd lose both of those deals. So I ended up calling the guy back. Um, the, the terms of the deal were 250 a month for 72 months. It's going to work out to be just under $18,000 for a property I paid uh, 2750 for with a little bit of back taxes owed. So uh, let's say 3,000 is what I'm into it for. So kind of a weird referral type of sale, but uh, one I'm pretty excited about. I called the guy this morning, let him know his payment would actually be 250 instead of 350. And he's ecstatic. He wants to know if we can, you know, work something out where he makes an extra payment every single month. We'll see if it actually happens, but um, he's happy to get, to get the land at 250 instead of 350 a month. So not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. But Tate, I want to, I want to like, I want to harass you now. You see, like, because if, if anybody's listened to us talk, you know, if they listen to us on round table calls or uh, uh, boot camp or wherever, they may have heard us say somewhere that if someone can't pay the doc fee and the down payment, you should not do the deal. Like now you see, I know the right answer. I know what you're going to say, or I think I know what you're going to say, but like, what do you say to somebody who says, wait a minute, you're full of crap, man, because you tell us not to do the deal, but then here you are doing a deal where the guy can't pay a doc fee. What gives man? Well, Scott, I wanted to do the deal. And he gave me, he had some of the money up front. It's not like he was trying to finance the doc fee. Um, and ultimately, I'm the boss, right? And I talked to the guy, I vetted him out, and I thought, you know what? This guy seems pretty, pretty much a straight shooter. He told me, yeah, I'm not going to have any problem paying it in the future. It's just, you know, I got to, I want to get this payment off. And then on Friday, when I get paid again, I'll pay you the other one. So, I don't know. It's a unique situation. It's a case by case situation. I agree with um, I did the same thing on my sale. Come to your rescue now. The lady couldn't pay the down payment right away. She did it later, but they'll do it. I mean, I, I think it comes down to knowing your customer. I took the first payment. I'm coming to Tate's rescue. I think that's a good deal. Okay. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. See, look, if people are listening to us. And it's Hold on, Scott. Lot. Are you? Hold on, Scott. Are you? Are you Hear telling me, me that you've never done this? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before, <laughs> before I answer that question, I just wanna, I want everybody to be on the same page here. You see, anybody that's listening to us, they hear Mark talk about like no cash deals. And they hear us talk about, oh, if, if they wanna do the doc fee over time, walk away. Like they hear this stuff. It's and hot. then all of a sudden they're like, well, I'm confused. Do I do this or do I do that? Do I listen? Eric. Should Tate have done that deal with the doc fee delayed or what? Well, here's what I would have done. And maybe, this is what, maybe this is what Tate did, but he just didn't word it correctly. But <laughs> the guy had 350. So in my mind, he had the doc fee and he had part of the down payment. So I would tell him, okay, I'll collect your 350 today. 
250 of that is your doc fee. I can prepare the documents now. 100 is your down payment, and then you owe me another 200 or whatever they owe for the rest of the down payment. And we just write that up in the contract that that's coming by a certain date. So as long as I can collect a doc fee, I don't care in what order. I mean, it has to be first before the docs, but like if, if I get that, but not the down payment, the down payment's coming later, I'm good. Long I'll as there's money now. Long as there's money a now. Rule. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys just broke the same rule. Eric just broke the same rule too, because guess what? We also say, oh, if they want to pay the, the, the down payment over time, that's a walk away. So you guys are talking out of both sides. You're saying two things and you're confusing everybody. What gives? Go. Oh. Scott, we're not doing anything confusing. We're yeah, just I think Scott making has the it. Answer. I think he has the answer. Yeah, like, I want. Let's, let's hear. Me. I'm not going to defend myself. I just made eighteen thousand dollars. I don't have to defend myself. Go yeah. ahead, Scott. Take it away. Okay, well, look. Before you we're going to come back to this one, because I want to tell you about my deal. All right. Like I got, I got two deals. I think are pretty cool. One is guess what? It's a cash deal. Shh, don't tell Mark. I paid eight thousand for the land. Sold it for twenty five thousand. To make matters worse, guess what? The guy doesn't want to doesn't want to close direct. He wants to close to a title company. So we go through a title company. Guess what happened? When the title company ran the um, the title report, they found a guy who had. By the way, the seller that I bought it from, the guy I bought it from, has a very common name. You know, like you, it, this isn't his name, but you might as well just call him John Smith or John Doe, right? Like it, it, it's just that common. And they found a lien, the title company found a lien for a guy with the same name, but it's not the same guy, it's a different guy. So they won't close on it until we have an affidavit from the seller saying that this is not him. So we have to go hunt down the guy, we, we hunt him down, he signs the affidavit, the title company's happy, we move on, but we had to go find the seller that we bought the land from in order to move forward. It's a cash deal, it got closed up today, my check for 25,000 is coming to me. It should be here like today or uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow through wire. Again, $8,000. There's no shame. There's no shame in cash deals. I agree with Eric, right? Like I'm going to take that money. I'm going to redeploy it. I'm happy with, happy with my decision. Move on with life. That's the way that it is. And um, I don't care if Mark knows or not, because guess what? Sometimes some people want to do cash. Some people want to do terms. That's the way that it is. The second deal that we had this week, was this one's a little nutty because what happened was we had a guy that he he bought he was been buying a property from us he has paid in fifty three hundred dollars to this property and he's had it for over a year he called up and he's like look I don't want this property anymore I don't like it okay it's it's in it's in Oregon he's like I don't like it so I want to stop but I found another property on Landmoto that I want to, to buy from you. And we're like, okay. So what we did was we went and we bought, we bought the property wholesale from someone on Landmoto. So I think we paid like $8,500 for the property from somebody on Landmoto. And um, he had already paid in 5,300 over a period of time. We transferred the 5,300 as his down payment and then he continued, but we ended up selling that land on terms for another $20,000. So we sold the property total for $25,000, less is $5,300 down payment. So it's like uh, nineteen seven remaining balance on a property that we bought wholesale for eight, eight, uh, $8,500, I think. Even the numbers by themselves don't aren't bad, even though we're doing this whole swap around thing, which is kind of weird. But I think that you know, sometimes, and what a lot of people miss about this business is that you, you can be creative like that. You can do things for people that you couldn't do if, if they were buying a house from you. It's not like if I, it's not like I could go to my, my bank and say, Hey, bank mortgage company, I'm buying this house from you and I don't like it anymore, but what else do you have? And they are not, they're going to let me switch houses. That's not the way that it is. That's not the way it works with houses. But with land, land is pretty cool like that. And then being able to go to the land moto inventory, if you will, find somebody who had a property that my guy wanted, transfer him over to there. We bought another property wholesale. I, I didn't like the how much we spent on the property, but at the end of the day, the guy spent a lot of money buying it. And I know that we'll sell it again if we need to. 
So those are kind of my, my two sales that we've had the last couple of days. But the one thing I want to circle back on is just that. And it's the same thing that Tate just did with the, the doc fee over time or the doc fee on Friday or Eric, the way he worded it, which was, oh, he got the doc fee, but the down payment over time. You see, the thing is, is that with all of these kind of rules or guidelines, that's just all they are. They're rules, they're guidelines, they're, they're, not, they're not laws. And what's cool is that we all have the flexibility to be ourselves, to be humans, and we're not a robotic bank. And I think that, Mike, would you agree that the people that you're dealing with, they, they respect that. That's one of the things that they like about working or buying land is that th there's no hard, fast rules that go along with this. Do right. you agree? I agree. And I also agree that the reason why we say these things uh, and, you know, they're uh, about the down and all that is because when someone's new to the business, we don't want them to get tripped up. I mean, if you've been doing the business for long enough, you get a sense for who you're dealing with. You get a sense for what's going on. But the general rule that we create is to keep people safe, right? From doing all this work without getting, get all the docs done and then the person doesn't pay a, pay a dime, right? Or it doesn't, so yes, as you become seasoned in this business or any business, you begin to recognize, uh, you know, ways that you can do deals that work. But in the beginning, it is a safe rule to have as a guideline to keep you protected from doing a, uh, getting yourself in a bad spot. I think that's what you're yeah. saying. Hey, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, ultimately it's what I had to do to get the deal to get closed and I feel good about it. I've spoken to the guy today. Everything's going according to plan. I trust the guy at this point, uh, you know, could he ghost me and disappear? Absolutely. But, you know, that's that's sales and that's the, the line of work that we're in. We are all taking these same risk. And I agree with what Mike said. You know, at first, you want to keep it as safe as possible. You you don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your resources. So So stick to the proven path. But ultimately, you've got to be flexible. We're not banks. We're not big corporations. We're mom and pop land investors. And we're working with people who want to work with mom and pop organizations so be that land seller yeah and, and eric i mean like do, do you have kind of rules that you follow and also at the same time you're willing to break i mean there are there any rules that you have in your business that you just absolutely won't break uh, i am yet to break the rule over not accepting electronic payment for terms in other words the only way I do a deal is if I have ACH or credit card payment for the terms deal. Um, I came really close to breaking that yesterday, um, but it didn't work out. So that is one of the rules we talk about that, that I, I have not broken. Um, I really don't want to because I don't want the extra work that goes along with it. You know, Geek Pay is automated. It makes life really simple. And if we start accepting checks or some other form of payment, things get a little more complicated. There's more steps involved. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I got, I got a guy that he absolutely refuses to, to uh, pay through credit card or ACH. I, had, I actually had two people and they would mail a check and they actually, their due date was like, like one day apart from each other and they would mail a check. Well, it's not like I went down to the bank or to the, uh, to the post office every day to get the check. And so sometimes a check would sit there for, I don't know, maybe a week. You know, there was no urgency on my part until they started getting notifications from Geek Pay that their payment was late and they flipped out. And I explained to them, look, as long as your payments are on time, don't worry about it. But if it's not there on time, well, then we have a problem, you know, like, but, but they're like, well, how am I supposed to know? So I told them, like, best thing to do is just to pay automated because otherwise you're not going to know because this is, I'm not going to change the way I go. To, I'm not going to run to the post office just for your check. It's just not uh, efficient to do that. And I'm not going to be looking for your check. So finally, the, the one lady, she got so mad at me. One of them, she got so mad at me because she got tired of the, the annoying geek pay, you know, your payment is late thing that she, uh, she basically transferred. And now she, now she pays through PayPal. Not that that solves any problems for me, but she wants to pay through PayPal. But okay, we can still process that thing. And then I got another guy that he just refuses to come off the, the check. So every month his check mails payment. Well, guess what happened last month? Last month, his payment was mailed. But because we, I, I'm in a, like a UPS store for my mailbox, 
it got applied, like it got sent from his bank with another company. So like the, the, the bank processing department sent like two checks to the same person. It wasn't us, it was somebody else. And, and my check, the guy's check went missing until the, the person returned it back. So it was like two weeks late. The guy's flipping out. I'm telling him like, it's not there. You, you didn't send the check. He's like, I did send the check. Well, it turns out that he did send the check, but the check was with somebody else's payment because it's like a, a you know, community like UPS store. And I'm telling the guy, you were on credit card or ACH, you wouldn't have this problem, buddy. So get it done. I think that that's really the, the key thing is like, we have these rules and they're there, but ultimately I'm not so sure. I mean, there's only a couple rules I think in this business that really are make or, or break deals, but I don't think any of them are on the sales side, right? Because it's not, well, I mean, you could it, don't transfer the deed. That's one of the things don't transfer the deed. But uh, beyond that, you know, payments or things you, be, you can be flexible, but just understand that there, there's a level of risk along with it. So pretty interesting to see how you guys do that and I'm I'm really glad that we all had some cash sales here that we could talk about too or some of us had some cash sales we could talk about because it just shows that cash there's nothing wrong with it do it have fun with it and you know we're, we'll still beat up on Mark that uh, he's wrong when he says cash is a bad deal I think the name of the episode could be shh don't tell Mark I did a cash deal <laughs> there you go Danielle we have a title shh don't tell Mark <laughs> All right, guys, listen, appreciate you guys listening. Glad you guys are here. Do yourself a favor. If you haven't checked out flight school, if you haven't checked out some of the training programs available to you, go to the landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule an appointment with Mike Zeno or Scott Bossman, schedule an appointment with them, learn more, learn how the land geek program can help you create more sales, get more passive income. Rate, review the podcast. Do us a favor. Keep it going. We've got a great, uh, great, great number of reviews there. Keep it growing, growing for us. Keep it going. It helps us get other guests as well. Appreciate you listening. And you guys ready to do this? It's a small group, so we should be able to time it perfectly. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. Ring. Oh, come on, Aaron. <laughs> You did that. You did that on purpose. <laughs> I I, I can say I find it a little odd that both Mark and Scott Bossman are here the same day. Is that because you know Mark always loves to build up Scott yeah. so much, and so he knew he yeah, wasn't yeah. there, and now he doesn't come. So Mark Mark's on a uh, Mark's on a trip. So then, dude, buddy, finds out that he's not going to be dude a dude. Buddy trip. is on a trip. Mm, oh, both on trips. Mm, both on trips. He didn't, Zeno, or not Zeno, Bossman didn't say what trip he was on. We should ask him. Huh. We should Vox over and ask him, where are you exactly? Is he, uh, is he, is he, uh, are him and Mark having a, a like, um, you know, like a secret retreat, retreat somewhere? A retreat? A retreat? Is that possible? Secret retreat. Hmm. Trick or treat? I don't know. Trick or treat. <laughs> retreat. That would be the name of their treat. Trick, Trick or treat. Retreat. Trick retreat. <laughs> we will have to explore this one next week. Where where exactly were they? <laughs> Just like twenty questions. Like, it better not both come back with tans. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you guys all ready for for boot camp? Yeah. Well, this is going to come out the the week that boot camp. Yeah, this is boot camp like tomorrow. Before. Yes. Guess what? I haven't even bought my ticket yet. I forgot. You're going to fly oh, that. You got to go buy a ticket. I could you haven't bought that. yet? No. Eesh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I think it's cheaper when you get close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally cheaper. You'll be fine. I can just drive there. <laughs> fly myself. No problem. <laughs> Jake, you hitting, the, you hitting the, the Cheesecake Factory today or what? Uh, no, but I am going to a hockey game tonight. Hockey tonight. Who are they playing? Tonight we're playing, let me see. The Predators, Nashville. Uh -oh. Watch out, Eric. Whoa. So you can have some. Tate, yeah. now 
when you were in Tampa a few weeks ago and we yes. talked about the food and everything, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we have never really explored how the highlight of your trip was going to Lightning Fan Fest. Hey, you don't put you that put that on me, Ricky Bobby. Do not put that on me. <laughs> Come on. That is 100% false. Cap, you were waving the lightning fast. No, 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 no. I got out of there as soon as I saw what was going on. You know, I am true, staying true to my Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not hard to remain loyal to these guys. I mean, we're just good, Scott. We don't, don't blow it in the first round of the playoffs. The Lightning won the President's Cup last year. Wait a minute. Yeah. So that's... That's two places I heard of on your trip to Tampa that you had to exit as soon as you could get out of yeah. there. Right. What? Tampa's is going a sketchy on? place. Tampa's a sketchy place. That's what it comes down to. A lot of speed dating, a lot of lightning fans. It's Indian speed dating, man. <laughs> but the fans. food was really good, Eric. Like, yeah. The food was really good. Did you see the Florida man? Saw multiple. He was everywhere. Oh, listen. yeah. I saw a headline yesterday. I'm gonna send it to you guys. It was, um, it was, it says Florida man pays off all student lunch debt at nine schools. You don't hear that making nationwide coverage. Literally, that's what I said. Florida man. So, nah, I don't... is that you, Scott? He's doing something good for the world, man. Is that you? Not me. Not me. Nope. You are, in fact, a Florida man. I am a Florida man, but. Uh, <laughs> That wasn't me. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. We'll see you guys later. See ya. See ya.